Thank you for joining me again on Carpathian Countryside for episode 4 with me, Mr. Silly P. It's just gone seven o'clock in the morning. We're into March 1 with a hop and a skip. We have jumped ahead to March. Um, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't sit right with me. I don't like it. <laughs> um, I'm going to put up a screen now. A little screenshot's going to pop up. Um, of contracts. Now, we've we got a look at the contracts available. Look, let's show you. So we've got a ton of cultivating contracts available so between when i last saw you and now we had um contracts go right the way through even through the winter months there was snow on the ground there was cultivating we had harvesting right the way through um and if i had have diversified the farm if i had decided you know what let's just blitz the contract work let's do contracts for other farms locally we could have cleared pretty much the debt the farm's in over the winter. Now, like I said, I know people don't like that, that kind of, oh yeah, but you'll, you'll be less than a year in and you've already cleared your debt. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, you've done the work to, you've done the work to clear it. Well, you know, if you were running your own farm and somebody said to you, you know, you bought a new tractor, it cost you 300 grand, whatever. And somebody said to you, look, we can offer you work right the way through the winter months um, and it will pay enough to pay off your tractor. You wouldn't say, oh no, actually, no, I'd rather not. I'm going to hibernate and I'll, I'll, I'll see you next March. You know, I, it, it hasn't sat well with me at all. Um, I'm a contract guy. Everybody knows that. But I said I was going to test it out. I was going to see what happened. You've already seen the contracts I did do. So there was that um, potato harvest I did. Um, there was... I've done two baling contracts and one cultivating. And that was in the last month... All, yeah, just into the last month, it's October, September into October, and I haven't done anything since then. Um, the screenshot, I'm talking about it, this is a look at some of the contracts that were available. So yeah, we're up to 317 grand, which is brilliant. We're going to go over to the store in a moment, we're going to buy a couple of cedars, I'll show you the field as we go over, weeds is not the word. Um, but as far as the baling went, I'd already done the one baling job, so I've done two more since then. And I tell you what, we've got, there we go. So of a thousand bales we can have in there, we've got 113 bales now. We have got um, round bales hay, 32, that was the first contract. The second contract, actually I'll put it up now, I took a little screenshot of the bale counter on the um, on the baler. And I think the bale counter was up to 130. Seven, I think it was 137, and then we had to. Uh, it took 82. How many barrels was it? It took anyway, regardless. Um, 
So we ended up with 53 bales left off that contract. And then I had a silage baling contract come up. Uh, we did 42 bales. It only took 14 to complete the contract. We ended up with 28. So we've got bales. Um, we need straw. If we're going to do cows, we're going to need straw. Now here's the other thing. Because I was skipping ahead, because I'm so focused on stop doing contracts, people want to see you skip ahead, people want to see you do your seeding, and then want to see you do your harvesting. Let's see if we can, you know, how many years will it take to get ourselves solvent? Um, that I made a, a, an error. And I shall show you the error now. Uh, if we go to here. So, the wheat harvest we did when we first started, we got 288,000 litres and nothing really was done to the field. So I thought, you know what we'll do? We'll plant wheat again and we'll redo it with everything done to it and see if we can get more than 288,000. That was kind of the plan. I was so focused on skipping ahead to March, to planting season, I missed the fact that wheat and barley here, you can only plant, plant in September or October. There's not a spring planting. <sighs> So yeah, wheat and barley is off the table. I won't be putting that in. And the frustrating thing was I noticed as I skipped into November, I just missed the planting window for wheat and barley. That's my, yeah, you know, it just it happens. I, I just, yeah, I miss, I was looking on there thinking, okay, you know, we'll roll around to, 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 to spring. So I'm going to put oats in the ground. Oat, wheat and barley yields are normally fairly similar. The other reason I'm going to do oat is because when we harvest it, I want straw. We're going to get the straw swath off the ground, um, whether we bale it and put it into storage, because we're going to do cows. Um, I said I might split the field and do sugar beet. We'll do that the next harvest rotation round. Am I going to skip ahead? Oh, I really don't know. Like I say, I know I said that was what I intended to do, but honestly, <laughs> I know it's, it's excessive, so it makes me feel sick. But it's, it's that feeling. I'm, I'm a bit kind of like... I don't, I don't want to, but anyway, <laughs> so a lot of power equipment and machinery is still here. We have a field of weeds, which is horrifying, but with, I'm going to get a cedar with cultivating. I'm buying two. I said I was going to do two. When we plant that, direct drill it, that should get rid of the weeds. My only feeling on that is um, if you were doing that in the real world and you were direct drilling in and you, those weeds all the seeds of the weeds as you're direct drilling in or if I went and cultivated that now and cultivated that in rather than weed killing it um, that's why you want to try and catch the weeds early if you catch them early and use a weeder either put it pulls them out of the ground and they die off when you get to the point where you've got seeds there's no grass when you get the grass seeds in the grass when they go to head. Um, if I cut those down now, all the weed seeds will go into the ground along with my seed. So, yeah. Um, and that's also based upon information received that that should be the case when I... Well, could be wrong now. There may be people shouting and yelling at the TV screen. Um, but <laughs> that's where we're at. So, this episode. I'm also considering, do I buy another tractor something with a bit more oomph because we're going to need to roll um there's not I mean, there are there are a selection of rollers available and there are quite a few of the ones which are the proper rollers um and you can connect multiple together so i could run you know, a whole load of them they get a bit fiddly and awkward to connect together but i could do so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how people feel about it. I, I know there's there's that cross section of people that are saying you know they they want to see the more old school style. But as I keep saying, that's gone. That old school school style. And if, if other YouTubes are doing that, if they are just bouncing from one harvest to the next, literally just you know plant prep, skip to harvest, harvest, skip forward, plant prep or prep then plant, skip to harvest. Honestly, I don't know how they do it. I, I, I don't know if it's my OCD. I just it doesn't leaving all those contracts behind. It's leaving all that. I've done it again. I'm so busy talking. I've missed the store. Oh, let me run poor bloke over. Um, it just doesn't sit right. Uh, you know, in a world where farms and farmers are having to diversify more, 
where you're just doing your crops and just doing your harvest for a lot of farmers isn't enough to pay the bills anymore you know it, it really isn't if you've got the ability or the option to contract for other people why wouldn't you you know why wouldn't you do it i i know i don't know i'm just telling you how i feel so um let's go to the store i'm gonna go for is the kush bath kush bath kush bath Sure, it's those. I'm gonna get two of those. I think they're. Well, I want to say 50 grand a pop. I hope they're 50 grand a pop. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Um, I'm sure they are. So, go to our cedars. I'll make sure I get the right one. Uh, that one says it direct drills. That one doesn't. So, we're gonna have that 55 six. Why is that one more expensive then? Curious. Anywho. So, standard equipment, design, wheel cleaning, yeah, why not? Uh, we'll put on hydraulic, and then we'll go with that for the pipe, that for those hoses, we'll buy it. I don't even look at what the what size is, 4.8 metres. I've just suddenly realised something, actually. I don't even know if my tractor's got enough horsepower to pull it. That was 150 horsepower. I'm sure these tractors are only 133. <laughs> we might be in trouble here. And we've got a fairly flat field, so it might be all right. I don't know. We have got some seed over at, this, at the farm. I'll bring the other tractor over and get that. And this is what I'm saying. You know, I, I could go for one big seeder, but I don't have the horsepower on my tractors and potentially not even the horsepower in this. Um, and what, that's what I was saying. We were looking at probably smaller machinery, but multiple bits of machinery rather than one big bit of machinery to do the work that's what we we're thinking about hmm can't afford to and, and like i say i could pay another 100 grand off of the um loan now which would leave me just over a hundred thousand but is that enough to get me through to what i need to do i'm like a lisa roller that's the other option as well if we go in look into the uh the tablet look at our roller options yeah we could run those a selection of those which aren't three and four meters don't go very far got these ones oh it's a nine meter though actually that's not too bad is it nine meter roller 130 horsepower it's going to take a while to roll the field but that might not be a bad idea 11 grand Because we'll roll after we put the crop in the ground. Plus we need to nitrogen as well. So that's what we're doing basically today. Is we're going to... I'm going to go for the KKZ 9.2. Let's get one of those. Let's buy that. And we've still got... Um, seed and fertiliser. Overfield. Now this one does seed and fertiliser. But I'm going to just seed. And we'll fertilise separately. So we'll get our seeding in the ground. Without whatever rate it's going to put it in at. And then we'll nitrogen, and then we'll roll. It's a big field, it's going to take a while. Um, I don't know, I can't remember how much seed we had when we, started, when we came to the farm. So this harvest round, I will, much as it pains me to say it, <laughs> all those cold range up. But I suppose the thing about it is, it will roll round into the next year. It's weird, because I found on Griffin, and I found on Edgewater, um, that... I kept saying on both of them when I did them that the contracts were kind of few and far between. You'd get a few, but not many. On here, there are tons. And the fields are big as well. Some of the fields are really big. I mean, it's water they are as well, but I didn't seem to get that many contracts. Whereas on here, they're, they're there all the time. On Edgewater, when we got to winter, they have very harsh winters. The contracts just dried up. For a few months, there was nothing to do. So I was finding other jobs to do. On here, there was stuff that I just could have kept going right the way through. Admittedly, if I'd done all the contracts, I would have run out. But there were plenty to be getting on with. I reckon I could have probably made, over the winter, or from when I last saw you, three, four hundred grand. A couple of the harvest contracts, there were a couple of cotton contracts, which were 24, 25, 26 grand each. Um, some of the cultivating jobs, actually we'll double check that now. Um, again, I don't, I've got that small cultivator, which would take a while. Um, that's one that I was thinking as well. If I took on some of those contracts, um, 
of some of the bigger ones have gone. There were some for 20 odd grand, but even these, you do a nine and 11 to 12. Average out, say that averages out at 10 grand each. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 you know, 70 grand just in this cycle for cultivating. So yeah, I reckon I could have made easy 300 grand, maybe 400 grand over those winter months. With what I've got now, and the fact I've already paid 100 grand off the loan, we could have cleared the loan. And then we're into clear money. If we want to push forward, you know, if I said I want to buy three sugar beet harvesters, what are they, three, 400 grand a pop? Only 1.2 million. So, yeah, I don't know. You be the judge. It's, it's, you know, what do you think? How do you feel about it? So I need to switch that over to oats. And things I don't know. It, it's um, that's that situation where, um, again, you, that kind of, you, you can't have it both ways. People want the realism of saying, yeah, but realistically, it might take you years. Absolutely it would. But you've also got to remember, this is a microcosm of real life. This is the, the reason that the pricing and things are set the way they are. I suppose because it's, it's still going back to what we were saying before about different ways that people can play the game or want to play the game. If you tell people they can come and play farming simulator, you know, learn how to farm, have a go at doing farming, but it's going to take you three, four, five, six years in game to get anywhere and make any money. People would get bored and they'd stop playing. Like I say, the, you die hard farm guys out there, you know, if that's what absolutely what they want to do. So it does become a kind of a microcosm of a much larger scale. So whilst we can play years at a time and with seasonal growth and stuff, that's kind of what it's aiming towards. I don't know. So, so you've got that situation where where people feel that if you've made a load of money in one year, it's not right. But it doesn't really matter. Does it? I don't know. No. And this is, I'm not ranting, I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to... Right, so the front tank is fertiliser, this is seed. We've got two bags of seed here. I'm not sure what they are, though. There we go. Get a seed in. If I can get one of these going, I can get the other one over, so we'll get one of our workers. And the other thing as well was, um, for the local workers, like I said, we want to get this built up to a point where... Um, we've got local workers working for, I mean, it's, it's a post-co-op situation now, isn't it? We want to employ people in the local community. We want this up and running as a big concern. Multiple bits of machinery, loads of workers employed. We can employ people in the local workforce. If we shut down every winter, if we shut down for blocks at a time and we just skip ahead, so we're only doing planting field work then harvest each year nobody's employed in the downtime and I guess to an extent that's true in the real world um, farmers and farms will employ people for the seasonal work they will but if we can employ people right the way through why wouldn't we this is a test for me as much as anybody else I, I'm trying to think of a time when I have planted directly into weeds but I don't think I have because normally I shy away from the weed situation as you well know. Uh, so what we'll do now... Why am I not getting a... Variable seed rates auto. Please tell me my stall something hasn't run out. Hang on. Because we skipped ahead. No, it can't have done. Surely. No, my soil information is still there. Why am I not showing anything for my seed rate? That's curious. It's not like oats are an unusual crop type either. Maybe it'll start when I drop it down. There we go. Variable seed rate auto. We're on mid. What should happen now? As we get... Yeah, I know I'm... I'm not getting uh, the straw that was on the floor but if we do oats this time around we will have an entire field of straw oh, it's pulling it all right we're going at seven and it is getting rid of the weeds as we go which is great it's what we need and this will get nitrogen and it will get um 
Monaco will get rolled. But 4.8 meters. And the size of the field. <laughs> Excuse me. Honestly, the, the shock, the shock and awe of the situation is having an effect on me. I've been asked, am I going back to Edgewater? Edgewater will be continuing. I'm, I'm, I mean, we're on episode 29 now or something like that. Um, there won't be many more episodes. I say there won't be many. I've got a couple of ideas of what I want to do. This is the more, I say, hardcore. And the other one, we're at a point now we've got a lot of money so we can afford to be buying big machinery and equipment and stuff. So I'm thinking of going a little bit, not, not bonkers, you know what I mean? Just trying a few things out. Let's get that angle right on that little bit there. So I would like to say I'm going to get a, probably could do a couple of rounds. Come on, let's get that a little bit done. There we go. There we go, around this. This should improve our environmental score because we haven't used any weed to kill or anything like that yet. Although we will get weeds come back now, won't we, once it's planted. Although we're getting rid of the weeds that are in the ground because we're doing direct drilling, that's not going to stop them coming back during the growing season. I think that's how it works. Um, again, I'm not overly fussed. I, as I've said before, if the weeds grow, I'll get rid of them. If they don't, I won't. <laughs> I'm not, I think that was the problem. I would get myself so bent out of shape and worrying about what do I do about the weeds? What, how do I get rid of them? When do they come? What's going to happen? How many times? It doesn't matter. If they're in the ground, I'll get rid of them. And that's the, the thing as well, when I kind of came to the farm, I thought, well, okay, we've got, you know, we've got two tractors at 130 odd horsepower. That's not to be sniffed at, that's pretty cool. Um, we need more horsepower. There we go, right now we're rocking and rolling. We're going downhill now, we're right. <laughs> This is going to take so long. <laughs> I guess what I can do, if I can get a couple of workers working, once we get a, a bit, a build up a bit of a head of steam, I can then come out with my nitrogen. And we can get our nitrogen going, which I think is probably what I'll do. So while we've got some workers putting the seed in the ground, and I might take on a cultivating job to pay for the workers. I've said that before about doing contract work just pick up a job here and there just enough to pay for the workers because the amount of time this is going to take it's going to be a fair bit of money it's going to cost us in worker fees so again why not cover those costs actually while I'm saying that I'm going to take on one um, one that pays pretty well probably that one there 13 grand that one there I'll borrow items as well on that one. So field 32. There we go. 13 grand. I mean, it'll be less than that because we borrowed the equipment, but it should be enough to cover worker fees for what we're doing here on our own field. So I, <laughs> I will see you in a little while. Once we've got two of these going, once I've gone round and done a couple of headlands, obviously they've got a bit of turning space. Close that now because that's not going to show me anything at the moment. I do like the sound of these tractors though. But there's something very honest about, you know, a big field taking a long time. It's very real world, isn't it? I guess. We've made a good start, so, look at fertiliser got enough I can start at least but what I have done is I, I did two rows round on the headlands and when I set the first worker off and then I went off to get uh, take the other tractor over and pick up the other cedar I found that it was stopping way way short of the two 
the headlands that I've done. So what I've done at either end, I think I've done four now, four passes backwards and forwards, just so it turns as it needs to. So as you can see, we're a good chunk over. So I've got the worker working on that strip there, but the left hand side of it going up and down. And then I was working on the other bits. So I've got a worker now going right strip and going that way. And I'll just leapfrog each one over as we need to. And as I said, whoop. I've done yeah, about four strips, I think it was, top and bottom, to give us a nice turning area. So we'll open this up. This is gonna, we're gonna go backwards and forwards with this. It's gonna take quite a lot. Um, if you look top left, what it's telling me it's gonna have to do, nitrogen level for optimum value for oats on sandy loam, that's a big chunk. So we're gonna be hooning through this. I might have to buy some more. I have bought two more bags of seed up at the store because I think we're going to get through that as well. And the cedars, because the, the horsepower of the tractors is not enough for the cedars, I'm getting those little blips here and there where the tractor will slow down to three, two miles an hour, then it will pick up again and it will go off again. It's just unfortunately the nature of the beast with um, the horsepower we've got with the cedars, so not a lot we can do about it really. So it's interesting again, if you don't do this very often, our optimal value, because of the crop type and the soil type, you don't always expect the um, bottom left and top right for it to go up and show green. It doesn't have to show green. If I stop now, just stop that and jump out. So whilst it's, just, it's sort of gone to a yellow on here, if we go onto here, Bottom right, it's now saying, saying pH value, which was our line, which we'd already done, is perfect, and our nitrogen is perfect. For the crop type, absolutely spot on. Um, it's saying expected yield 98%, yield potential 100%. Again, I think people, we're always striving for that 120% yield and that kind of thing, but sometimes the yield for that crop on that soil type, you're not going to get a high yield. It won't go above a certain amount sometimes. But anyway, we, we, that's where we're at. We'll get a little bit of a boost when we um, when we roll um, I didn't mulch this ground so we would have got a little bit of a bo boost if we'd done that so it hasn't been mulched so we haven't gone maximum I have to say that's not using I thought it would use way more than this and I think the speed of the, the planters as well will probably catch up doing the nitrogen fairly quickly. Let's go back to there. I'll do a loop round. I've already taken the um, the cultivator that I borrowed for doing the cultivating job. I've taken that out to the field. So what I'll do when I've caught up here with the cedars and I'll give them a little bit of a, a bit of room to manoeuvre. I'm going to take over the lorry and the little bale trailer I did when I was doing the liming over to the store to pick up the two seed bags. I'll stick those in the back of the trailer so when they run out of seed we can top those up in the field. Um, so once I've caught up with everything then I'll whiz out and I'll get that cultivating contract done. Like I say that should then cover um, at least my labour costs, my worker costs. I think I paid 5,400 for the two bags of seed. Again they're from the uh, if I, if I remember to put them in there, all the mods I use are listed in the description. Uh, I think it's from the multi, I want to say the multi crop greenhouses. It comes with seed bags and lime bags, and they're larger capacities and a little bit cheaper as well. So I think we've got 8,000 litre bags for lime, and I'm pretty sure the seed bags are 4,000 litre bags for 2,700. So yeah, I've got two of those. No, yeah, 4,000. Yeah, so I've got 8,000 litres. So that should be enough to finish this fifth field, I think. I don't know. If I need to get by more, I'll, I'll show you I've bought more when we get there. But, for the time being, I'll go and do the headlands as well. So I'll probably do a couple of runs round, and then I'll do a couple of runs up and down here. And then, hopefully, if you, know, if you can see the first worker is finishing this last strip here, and then I'll leapfrog that worker over. I'll check on the seed situation. I think I'm probably going to have to whiz out and get those seed bags now and bring them back. But we'll get that done. And then it will just be rolling. Um, I've got to decide what am I going to do. 
at least for this first one I think much as it's <laughs> much as it's pains me to say it I'm gonna jump ahead to harvest I, I don't like to leave them there'll be a load of baling contracts because we'll be going through the, the summer months but to be fair we've got a few bales there already so if we were going to start doing cows I'd say once this is ready to harvest and we get the straw off of this and then we see what crop we get and we sell the crop we should have a bit more money so maybe we can buy a forage harvester and we you know we can start working our way out we're not even in a position again where we can buy a new field yet or anything like that so it's working out the finances whilst it looks like oh yeah you've done all right you started the episode on 300 grand well that's come down a little bit we bought two tractors i've got seed to buy if we looked at what are we going to do next do i invest in machinery and equipment do i invest in fields do i wait for the next harvest round on this and then we've got a big chunk of money and then invest in some bigger machinery or you know i definitely want to get a bigger tractor with a higher horsepower i've already got my eye on what i think i want to go for if there's one available locally we shall see so yeah, I'm going to have to leapfrog that tractor over. So what I'll do now, I'll stop there. On a whiz back, we'll leapfrog our worker. There you go. Worker F has completed their task. And we'll check and see how much seed's in this. Yeah, weed's growing, weed. So whilst we are direct drilling and cultivating sort of these in at the same time, we have got weeds growing, so it's going to need to be weeded once they come out the ground so we have to get a mechanical weeder and i'm thinking with that oh we've still got 1027 liters so we should be right um yeah i'm thinking we're probably probably going to need something with a bit more oomph because we're going to need to get a, a fair size weeder i don't we, otherwise we're going to be you know <laughs> It's going to be a bit of a long haul otherwise i'm going to go as close to the tower as i can next run up i'll probably take control of this myself i'll go around the, the um pylon and we'll go from there Everything's working, everything's seeding, liquid fertilizer's going on. Um, I haven't needed to fill them up yet, but I've took, bought the two bags of seed over that I purchased. Um, but I, was, I noticed it was going down fairly slowly, so I've got a bit of time. So I thought we'll get over here, we'll get this cultivating job done. I think we're about two grand into um, worker payments already for the field and we're maybe not quite halfway so we're going to be looking at about four or five grand but then over the when you think about it longer term if we do get more than 280 grand uh, 280 grand 280,000 litres of oats of it which is what we got wheat um, we'll make that money back it seems like a lot up front obviously there was another four grand when we did the um, not the liming harvesting because we had two harvesters running at one point and there was worker fees for that as well but that was the last harvest round so this cycle round yeah even if we end up 10 grand in on paying for workers we should easily make that back and some so that's where we're at i thought i'd get this done i think when we get to a point well the same as normal whenever i do any contract work um obviously you're paying to borrow equipment from the farmer that comes off your top line because it's their wear and tear their machinery so you don't get paid as much if we do get a larger tractor i'll look at getting a larger cultivator and then jobs like this we could pick up like i say some of these were, were out of 20 grand you know 20 grand for a cultivating job when you've got no inputs you've got no seed no fertilizer requirements because you're not seeding or fertilizing and it's actually just all money in your pocket a bit of wear and tear on your vehicles and machinery but other than that i'll probably miss a few bits here and there as you can see but there's always a bit of leeway i could come back and gather those up if i want to 
So yeah, I'll just keep going on here. If I get a message saying that work has finished, the tank's empty or anything like that, we can whiz back over and uh, and top them up. Other than that, yeah, I'll see you in a little while. What time is it? 9.05. It's taken a while to seed the field, but we knew it would do. It's a weird shape. Didn't even notice this bit when I first looked at the field. Where are we? I'm having that controller problem again. This was, a, say, this was a new controller. I suppose when you think about the hours I've got onto my controllers, my first one that came with my PS5. My PS5 is how old now? Five months? That second year, third year? Absolutely. Time, think now. Um, my first controller broke, so I bought this one. Um, oh, who was it that sent me sent me the money to buy a new controller? Well, they sent me the money. It paid for it anyway. Um, But I'm getting this weird drift thing again. So it's on the right, the right stick for some reason. Um, where if I start to move, is it that way? It, it just carries on drifting across. And I've I've done the same as I did last time. I've looked online, and there's all sorts of people that, that suggest removing the joysticks. You can pull them out. You can pull them up until they click, and it will reset. You can you should try cleaning them out because sometimes you get a bit of gunk or a bit of muck or something in there, which can affect the movement of the controller. Which I did all of those things on my previous controller that came with the PS5, and it was still doing it. So I ended up having to buy a new one. But I guess when you look at the wear and tear and the hours on it, yeah, they, they wear out. I guess. I mean, this is part of what a lot of people wouldn't like or don't like about this map. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Never has done any maps that have like telegraph poles and pylons and that kind of stuff. That's what adds to the immersion, the realism of it. You know, you get that in the real world. You can't eradicate them all. If you've got a field that's got telegraph poles in it, you just deal with them. Last bit going in. It's ten thirty-two. <laughs> we got there. I didn't use all the seed. I've just topped up the cedar, the other cedar, which is just finished. This one's just doing the last strip. Now, liquid fertilizer is spreading, and we're on this last little bit here. So it's pretty much kept up what we're doing because it's just running a little bit faster um, than these two are. So what we'll do now is take this up the top. Um, I have also bought over the roller, so we're good to go. Our, nitrogen, uh, our pH, our lime was done before, seeds in the ground, liquid fertilizer has gone on, so it's just rolling left. And then obviously I suppose the next stage will be weed and I'll say we'll probably have to come back to that and get a weeder of some description. I'm not sure how much I've got left. It's not much in that bag, I wouldn't have thought. 919 litres. So I've topped that up. 919 left in that, which I'll top that one up with. So I've got seed in both ready for next time I use them. But what we'll do now... Yeah, we'll start rolling. I don't know if I've got enough liquid fertiliser in um, the sprayer. I've refilled that four times, I think. So 4,000 litres of liquid fertiliser. For a field that size? Not too bad, actually. I've had to top all three tractors up with fuel, because both, oh, both of them, all three, both of them got down. All three of them were down pretty low. I'm going to have to get that fuel tank at the farm topped up. We, I don't know how much we've got left in it. Okay, so. Oh, 
Let's get on with it, I suppose. This can go a little bit faster. Well, a little bit. It's a little bit wider, so it shouldn't take as long. Oh, I'll be honest, yes, all right, it's 10.34. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. For some reason, although we're going a similar sort of speed, and the headers are a similar width as well, I thought it was quicker than when we did the harvesting. But maybe it's not. I suppose when I check the time, it probably isn't, actually. <laughs> So yeah, been a busy old day. Oh, that uh, cultivating contract I completed. So money's gone back up again. So that covers our wages. I'm not so I'm not going to pick up any more cultivating jobs. I might do, but then to be fair, I've got no other jobs that I need workers for now because that's uh, this is our only field. So until we get round to harvest time, probably don't actually. Although, if I'm going to buy another tractor, a larger one, possibly when we get on to doing... Because we're going to like I said, we're going to need to do weeding. I'd rather have a bigger weeder. Um, I don't... It's one of those things I've said before. I don't think there are that many weeders available. Um, so as far as sort of standard, the Treffler at 15.2 metres is probably not a bad shout. It only requires 150 horsepower, but as we saw already with my tractors, with only 130, 133, they do struggle a little bit. So if I can get something with a little bit more horsepower, even if it's up around like 200, something like that maybe, that's probably just enough to run that. And then we should be able to get sort of a mechanical weeding done. Also, then we don't take a hit for using herbicides and that kind of stuff. You know, like I said, I'm not chasing environmental scores, but I'd rather knock them on the head straight away than leave them to grow. Well, I've got more to do then. Get this all rolled and just see the tractor over there in the distance finishing off the uh, fertilising. We check on our, our map. There we go. Oats in the ground. Last section going in for our nitrogen. PH is good. Yield, that's from last time. That was our seed rate. And that's our soil types. So there's a couple of areas of heavy um, or high seed rate, but for the most part, pretty much, well, most of it low. A little bit standard, but yeah, it was all right. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you don't want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.